Close your eyes and focus on your breath. Take the breath as your refuge right now. You don't have to depend on any clever thoughts or any interesting ideas to entertain yourself. Because the mind needs refuge. It needs a safe place to stay, both from outside influences and from your influences inside, your greed, aversion, and delusion. You need a safe place from these things. So we focus on the breath as a place where you know you're in the present moment, and you know as long as you're with the breath, you're in a good place, you're in a safe place, where you can be alert, mindful, and as the Buddha said, ardent. In other words, seeing what's unskillful in the mind and wanting to put an end to it, and what's skillful in trying to give rise to that. That's a good attitude to have, because it's your unskillful thoughts that sneak in and they try to act like friends. And you go along with them. Okay, that's what you need protection from. And so when you're with the breath, it helps strengthen your mindfulness, strengthen your alertness. So you can know who inside you can trust and who you can't. So give the breath some time. And as other thoughts come in to pull you out, ask yourself, can you really trust those thoughts? you followed them many, many, many times before. And sometimes they've given you some pleasure, which is why you go for them again. But all too many times that your thoughts, your ideas, your plans can actually lead to suffering. That's what you've got to protect yourself from. I mean, the influences from outside, the dangers from outside are nothing compared to the dangers in the mind. We can sit here and think about all the kinds of dangers around us. But they can't reach in and make the mind do the sort of unskillful things that can really lead you to suffering down the line. It's when you let those influences in and use them in an unskillful way, okay, that's when that's when you really suffer. And so you realize that the, the true danger lies inside. But fortunately the solution lies inside as well, as we stay here with the breath. So learn how to sort these things out. The Buddha calls this analysis of the Dhamma. You analyze what's reliable in the mind, what's not reliable in the mind. Right now the breath is reliable. It comes in, goes out. There's going to be some day when it stops. But while it's coming in and going out, you can use it as a place to tether the mind and give it some safety. So the greed, aversion, and delusion come up. Okay, you're in a position where you can recognize them for what they are, not get fooled by them. Because they're like, as John Lee says, they're like thieves and criminals. They sneak in and they give you all kinds of ideas. And then when you act under their, their influence, and they, as, he said, as he says, when the police come to catch you, they run away. In other words, when karma comes and it has its results, you know, the greed, inversion, delusion are not going to be there to help you not suffer so much from those results. They run away. They leave you helpless. So you can't depend on them. You can depend on the Dharma, and this is where you find the Dharma, right here at the breath. So take this as your refuge. We talk about taking the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha as a refuge. It's basically learning how to develop their qualities in our minds and taking refuge in those. That's when we find our true refuge, right here inside.